Hey guys, welcome to my channel and I'm back again with another really interesting video guys. And in this video, we are going to actually create a RAG pipeline from Llama Index with the help of Llama 3 model. And guys, yes, this is sort of an extension of my previous video where we created a RAG pipeline querying from a document. And in this video, we are going to actually query from a SQL data source. But the underlying infrastructure, which is Llama Index, Llama 3, Grog, is going to actually remain the same. So, without taking any time further, let's get started. So, guys, I am actually going to start directly from the notebook on how to create the RAG pipeline. Because the introduction about Llama Index and Llama 3, I have already done in the previous video. So, if you want to watch that, please do check out my previous video. Okay. Now, in this notebook, guys, we are going to actually show you two capabilities. The first capability is just how you can do, uh, you know, text to SQL, how with the help of uh, Llama Index and uh, with the help of certain libraries, we can actually convert your text queries into your SQL query and query a toy data set, basically a sample database that we are going to create. And the second part is very important where we actually create a text to SQL retriever on its own. So what is a retriever and why do we need it? That I'm going to explain you later. But these are the two things that we are going to do. So let's jump into first having all the imports. So you can see that the first line is just, you know, installing Llama Index, Grok, etc. And, you know, Llama Index embeddings. And then the second thing is that we need to import, uh, you know, vector store index. We need to import hugging field embedding, sentence splitter, grog. So we need all these uh, simple imports just to get started with our, uh, you know, with, with our journey. And markdown display is just for actually writing the data in a better, writing a response in a much better formatted form. Now comes the interesting part. So we are going to use an SQL Alchemy Python library to actually create the database. And we are going to uh, use uh, many classes from this library like create engine with a function and then metadata table column etc etc. And uh, the first step which we are going to do is we are going to create the engine. So if you want to uh, actually experiment this with the uh, Lava index, first we want to create a dummy database, right? Dummy SQL database. So for that, we are going to create an SQL in-memory database with the help of SQL Lite. And that is why we are using this command to create a SQL Lite engine. Finally, we uh, then also create our metadata object. We now are going to create a tiny SQL table. And this table is called as city stats. Now this city stats table is basically having some information about some cities like the name of the city, the population of the city and the country of the city. So this code just actually creates a table and then we just uh, have this create all function, pass the engine object into it, which actually creates a table for us in an in-memory SQLite database. Then we define uh, our SQL queries, right? Uh, we define our SQL database, right? So for that, we need to import the SQL database. I am also importing uh, grok here and loading my grok API key because this is going to be used later. But the important thing here is to defining your SQL database is just create a SQL database object, pass the engine and pass the tables that you want to create. And then you have the, um, you have the uh, reference to your SQL database that you just created. So we just created our city tables uh, SQL database table. So now we have just gotten the hold of it through this reference variable. Now that we have got the hold of it in this reference variable, well, this line is just repeated, but we have got this object now. It is time for us to use this object to actually insert some data into this table. So here are some of the rules that we want to insert Toronto uh, City, Tokyo City, Chicago, Seoul, etc. And for each and every row, we are going to create an insert into our city stats table and uh, we are going to add that value and then we are going to simply execute the statement okay now that we have gotten all the rows inserted it is time for us to just have a simple view at the table because we want to be sure that can be are the rows actually created or not so when we do a simple view of the table you can see 
all the four rows have been created where you have four different cities from uh, you know different uh, four countries as well now just to show you guys that we are going to use actually llms to query our database but in a normal scenario in a raw scenario when let's say I, we don't have any llm how are we actually going to query a database it's through a select query right so here we are just using uh, sql alchemy's uh, again certain libraries to actually execute this query select city name from city starts and then when we get the rows, we are printing each and every row. And you can see that because we only selected the city name, only one column is printed. And uh, that column prints the four cities that we have actually had. So that basically, you know, doubly checks our, uh, doubly confirms that all the rows are created. And if a SQL query, select query needs to be run, it actually runs successful on this data. Okay. So now it is the time for us to keep this in mind and start working on creating a large language model. So to create a large language model, we are going to use Grok and Grok uh, provides us some large language models uh, as an inference endpoint. And one of the language models that is available that is also very, very good is the Llama 3 model, which is recently launched. So I provide my Grok API key here and again showing you that my all my keys are present inside this Collab Secrets folder. And then we also load our embedding model, which is the all minimum L6 V2 model. We just wanted to use a small model so it gets loaded pretty quickly and that's why we use it. You should be free, you should feel free to use any of these intense transfers or embedding model uh, you want from the hugging face or from any other data source. Or if you want to load it on your local, that also works. Okay. So now we have actually gotten through all the boilerplate code of creating the database. Uh, now it's the time to actually uh, do deep dive into how we can actually query the database through a large language model without using any SQL queries, just plain text. So that part is called as text to SQL query engine, right? We are using plain text. We want to convert it into a SQL query and then use it to query our database. So for that, there is a very simple uh, class that is provided to us by Lava Index that's called as NSQL table query engine. And you can see how easy it is. It just takes few arguments, it takes the SQL database that we created above. It takes the tables that you want to query, takes the large language model, takes the embedding model. And that's it. That's the constructor. And then when I write this query string, which city has the highest population, and I do query engine dot query and I pass that string, you can see that uh, it gives us a response. And when I print that response, it prints us, uh, it prints it very correctly that the highest population is of Tokyo and this is the population. So it not only actually gives me the uh, highest population, it also gives me the value as well that this is the highest. And all this is done without doing any select query. All we did was provide a large language model, provided a SQL database, and that's all. That's all we needed to actually query a database successfully to get the desired result. So you can see how powerful uh, it is already, right? Uh, now, the part two for that is more interesting, guys. Part two is about creating a retriever object. Now, most of you might ask that what is a retriever object and why do we need it? And that's a very valid question, guys. You can see above we had a simple query engine. Okay, we had a NSQL table query engine and we were using that to query, right? Now, here the thing is that we create a NSQL retriever object to query something. Now, both of them are actually almost doing the same thing. They are also querying the database, NSQL query engine, and retriever is also querying the database. But what is special with retriever is that you can use this retriever, this SQL retriever class, to actually plug in into, a, uh, into an abstraction class called as retriever. Okay. Now, you might ask, why do we need abstraction? Why do we need a... Uh, you know, an abstracted class like retriever to actually query our SQL database or query anything. And the answer for that is that 
Retriever class is an abstracted class which can take any query engine to query your SQL database, to query your uh, documents, to query any other data source that you want. And what we want to do is we want to have certain abstraction in our project code so that when you are giving somebody a object like retriever, they don't have to care about how is it actually retrieving the data. Is it actually retrieving the data from SQL? Is it actually retrieving the data through a uh, simple text file? The person who is holding the retriever object should not care what data source it is actually using to query the data. It has the retriever object. It knows that this is a query it wants and it just queries and it gets the answer. And that's all the thing that user should worry about. And also there is a case that later, right now, if my query engine is querying SQL tables, right? But later, if I want to make my query engine query uh, uh, data flat files or text files, right? Then I have to actually make change in my code. I actually have to you know, uh, go to this line and I have to change this line to a different type of query engine to make sure that I query the documents and I don't query a SQL database. Or if I'm just changing the database name or the table name, I still have to change this whole object to make sure that I actually get the desired result. Whereas if I'm holding a retriever object, if I'm holding an abstracted object, the person who has implemented that or who has created the reference for that can actually make changes at their end and I don't have to make any change in my code. Okay. So that is the whole point of using abstraction and that's why we need a retriever class. So here you can see that we just simply created a retriever class in SQL retriever where we actually provide the exact same things. Just there is this object called as return true, uh, return raw equals to true. So you can see that when we get the results uh, with this query engine, we get it like this, right? We get uh, question return the top five cities with the highest population. So we actually get top five cities in a pretty raw JSON type of manner. Whereas if you just do return raw equals to false, and then you uh, also try to return the response with their metadata, you receive a much well formatted response where you have uh, you know, the similarity, the text, the metadata, etc. So you get a better formatted response. It's just that uh, you can use either of it. Frankly, I didn't see much difference in using return raw true or return raw false. The major important thing is that you get your query engine object created now. So we have this NL SQL retriever object. Sorry, not query engine. The main important thing is we got our retriever object created here. So NLSQL retriever is uh, the one we are going to now plug in into a retriever query engine. So instead of creating a specialized SQL query engine, we are creating a retriever query engine and then we are passing the retriever object into it. So if this object is NLSQL retriever right now, it means it is actually going to query using SQL. But if later I change this retriever object to anything else, like for example, to read a directory or to read a data source or something like that, then you don't have to change this entire code, right? Because this entire code is not aware of what the retriever is. It, this query, uh, this uh, response is only based on this query engine object, which is just having a single query, return the top five cities with their population and the, uh, with the highest population. So if I make change in this retriever object here, I don't have to make change in this line or in this line, right? So it's the same that we use abstraction so that when we make uh, any changes, we have to, you know, reduce the number of refactoring, the amount of refactoring, and it becomes much more scalable, right? So you can see now I query the uh, retriever query engine. And when I print the response, it also prints the same response and with Tokyo as the number one with the highest population and it also returns the response in a much well formatted way than the previous ones which we have uh, used right like NSQL query engine then print it in a much well formatted way but this one does okay obviously we can change the formatting uh, later on but I would definitely say that your query engine works better in some ways 
So I would highly recommend actually using this in your project and just keep changing the retriever object as per your requirement. Okay. So that was the video guys. This is a short and sweet video of how you can create a rack pipeline engine in just a few lines of code with the help of Llama Index, Llama 3 model, Croc. So I hope you guys like this video guys. And I, if you did like this video, please do not forget to like this video and share this video with your friends. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions for me, please do write down in the comment section below. I would be really happy to read them and address them. It's going to benefit the community as well. And in the end, guys, if you have not yet subscribed to my channel, please do subscribe and hit the bell icon for future notifications of more such programming and coding related videos. I'll see you guys in the next video, guys. Until then, take care and bye-bye.